What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to be taking a bunch of photos from as far back as 2012 and giving them a second look and basically explaining how I process them or at least lightly process them in Lightroom Classic. Um, here I have a variety of photos, mainly landscape photos or uh, night shots of, you know, long exposures of buildings and landscapes, cityscapes. But I've also got a few in here of people so that I can show you how to process a variety of different types of photos in Lightroom very quickly. So first of all, I'm just going to start here with my photo of Hallstatt. Um, by the way, um, back here I've got everything added to a quick collection. And like I said in my first video, uh, in my first Lightroom video, um, this little button at the top is what adds uh, photos to your quick collection. So there's a little, so if I'm going into my photo library and I want to add something to the um, quick collection, I would just click right here on this little circle and it'll add it to the quick collection. And you'll see it just came up right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that because that was kind of a garbage photo. But um, basically, uh, that's how you add them to your quick collection. So I'm just going to double click over here and we're going to start with this photo of Hallstatt. Now, as you can see, um, this photo goes from a very dark uh, corner over here to a very light corner over here. And so um, this photo is kind of difficult to process if you're a newbie. But I'm just going to show you some quick tips on how to quickly um, fix up a photo like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the shadows a little bit. And as you can see, uh, now these trees start to appear. So if I reset that photo, you'll see it's very dark. So I'm just going to go ahead and brighten up those trees a little bit. Now you get to see a lot of color here as well as in these buildings and everything looks a little bit brighter. And then I'm going to bring the highlights down. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to bring them all the way down. Um, I'm going to increase vibrance so I can get some color out in the sky as well. Now, when I first took this photo and I probably processed it years ago, Lightroom did not have this dehaze feature and now we do. And so that's why I love going back to this photo and taking a look at it again, as well as a lot of my other old photos. But um, as you can see with the dehaze feature, now we're actually getting those mountains back in. And it's almost as if you don't have that haze. It dehazes the photo. So um, there's a really cool photo. Now it's darkened a lot of the photo, but I'm not too worried about that because now it kind of looks like one even sort of darkness for the most part. So now I can actually just increase the exposure, expose that photo a little bit, uh, maybe add some contrast to bring in some details. But as you can see, at, right at the top where the sun is hitting these mountaintops directly, um, you can actually see some really nice color coming in. Now this is an incredibly high resolution photo. Um, if you want to be able to see which photo, I'm sorry, which camera uh, you took this photo with, you can actually go back to the library setting and all your metadata is here. So it shows here that I took it with my Nikon D5100. Um, here's the resolution of the photo. And you'll see in a second that this is about 5000 by 3200. Um, my Z7 takes photos that are much larger. And so I'm just going to hop back over now to develop. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because you can see that everything here is beginning to look pretty harsh. And so I'm going to bring up those shadows a little bit more and maybe just add a little bit of clarity since these are things that are in the distance, a little bit of texture to see the trees in. And um, because this is really harsh, I'm just going to bring down the contrast a little bit. I just uh, I want to even it out a little bit. And then also the dehaze, I'm going to bring it down just a tad. So now it's looking a little bit better. Um, maybe a little cooler than I like. So I'm also going to warm up the photo a little bit. And there you go. Now it just gives it a whole different mood. As you can see, it looked a little bit dark and drab, maybe even like a day that was about to rain. And, and now it's kind of looked like a mid, it kind of looks like now a mid afternoon photo. And then the last thing I'm going to do here is actually just straighten the photo. And what I'm using as a reference point, actually, so you guys understand is this um, tower here. To me, it looks like it's leaning a little bit. So I'm just going to straighten out this photo a little bit by sliding it a little this way. And there we go. Oh, maybe it's rocked a little too far. There we go. 
and now I have a nice straight photo. I also think I have a little too much water in here. So I'm just gonna, now what I did was I went to this little crop tool here and then I'm grabbing this corner, but at the same time, before I click, I hit shift on my keyboard and I go ahead and drag that in. And what that does, it keeps the photo uh, proportional. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and bring in, using the rule of thirds, kind of bring my pseudo horizon here uh, about on the lower third mark. And now I have sort of a nice postcard type photo with the main part of the town here right in the center in great focus. Um, this is a little bit out of focus, so I'm not crazy about this photo, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and, um, oh, one last thing I forgot is you see this little green line that's showing here? That's known as chromatic aberration. And so we're gonna remove that as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run down here to the lens corrections section. And you might be over here by default. I'm gonna head over to manual. And since we're working with the green side here, um, this green bar here, I'm just gonna defringe this a little bit and move the color there. Now, do you see, well, you may see now that that, that uh, is beginning to turn like a, a black line. So um, there you go. This is the way it looked before with that sort of green bleeding out. And now what I've done is I basically removed that and you've got a kind of a dark line. Now what that is, is the contrast with the sky behind it with shadows in front. So that creates a black line, but now moving out, you don't see this distracting sort of green bleeding over the top of the mountain. It just looks like a nice clean line, almost fake, but at least it's a lot better and a lot more clear than it was before. I'm also gonna do the same because if you notice on these trees, you see these, this kind of purple uh, color here bleeding off the trees. I'm gonna do the same here with the purple or the red um, side. And you'll see those just vanish. And now I don't have any purple at all in those trees, which is a totally unnatural color um, that was brought in because of the lens. And so that's a totally normal thing, but again, it's an unnatural color what I, that I don't want in a photo. And so I have basically eliminated those fringe colors. So there we go. I think uh, I've done a number on this photo and uh, just to kind of show you what the original one looked like, it looked like that, and I brought it to this. So much nicer photo, and now we can move on. Now for the next photo, same place. Now right away I can see that I'm totally crooked. Actually, I, I was taking this from a boat and the boat was probably rocking at the time. I don't remember exactly, but uh, again, using the tower as a reference point, I'm gonna go ahead and straighten out this photo a little bit. Let's see if that helps. I don't know. This still looks a little bit crooked to me. I don't know why, but I'm just gonna proceed and maybe we can mess with it in a bit. So I'm gonna bring up the shadows, bring down those highlights. Uh, dehaze. Um, now this is the same setting, same day, same place. So I'm going to treat the photo very similarly to the way I did just a minute ago um, with the first photo. Expose. There we go. Not liking it. Still looks crooked to me. Oh man, it's really messing with my head right now. And I think. Uh, it's a little more straight now. It's really this tower that throws me off. So I'm going to bring that straight. So I think it's it's pretty straight now. Now to crop the photo appropriately, I'm just going to bring that up. Maybe eliminate some of the water. Maybe now it'll appear more straight. There we go. I think it was just the water and the reflection that was making it look a little bit um, crooked. So it looks like we're good now. Um, maybe, maybe not. God, this is really bugging me. Okay, now it looks like we're close to good. The only thing I have left to do here probably is to decrease this contrast again. And maybe expose a little more. There we go. Mountain looks good. Still getting those fringe colors, so I'm just going to um, do what I did before.
There we go. I'm still getting a little bit of blue in the trees. Oh, no. Not in there. Okay, there we go. And then once again, just to kind of show you what the original looked like and how I changed it. Um, moving on. Now this is a place in Austria called Spiegelsee or Mirror Lake. And um, same idea here. You've got really dark shadows here and you've got a bright sort of horizon out here, a bright uh, background there. What I'm gonna do, and this is a feature I didn't have when I first took this photo, is the first thing I wanna do is dehaze, bring that, bring that out a little bit. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is bring up the shadows and as you can see right away you can see these beautiful rocks and everything around it lots of colors and then um, I brought down the highlights because I want to kind of be as even as possible on the lighting artificially and then now I'm gonna bring it up so that we can see it a lot like the way I saw it that day um, increase the vibrance here warm up the photo a little bit now all this is looking a little unnatural, but um, maybe what I'm gonna do here is just decrease the contrast. Bring up the blacks a little bit. Okay, there we go. And add some texture. And then for some reason also, this photo just looks a little off balance to me. So I'm gonna straighten it out. And there we go. I'm still seeing some fringe colors there. So. I'm gonna zoom in a little more. Okay, there we go. Um, you know what, I don't like all those rocks being exposed like that, so I'm gonna darken those down a little bit so it brings more attention to this mirror effect and the whole reason why um, this little lake was called Spiegelsee or Mirror Lake. So there we go, I have the before photo here, after photo here, night and day. Um, and so now we just move on. All right, look at that. Here is me at the Krimmel Waterfall or Krimler Wasserfall. Um, also in Austria in the Krimler National Park. And um, first of all, I've got some colors in my jack, uh, my sweater that I want to bring out. As you can see, very subtle difference there, but um, kind of want that to be noticed. And so. Uh, start there now. I'm gonna bring down the highlights a little bit so you can see details in the water and Then bring up the shadows so that at least you can see my face And then I'm gonna expose the photo a little bit. There we go Increase contrast Now Relatively speaking, I mean this isn't like a um, a uh, landscape shot um, Although the person taking this photo of me was kind of far um, they zoomed in in order to take this photo, but either way, um, it's not your typical uh, wide landscape photo, so I'm not going to use the heck out of the dehaze, but I am going to use it a little bit to cut through some of the mist and bring some of those trees in. And then I'm going to increase clarity also, same reason for the trees. And then, um, still looking a little dark, so I'm going to expose it a little more. Okay, there we go. Um... I'm seeing some fringe colors there. I don't know if you guys actually know what I'm talking about here, but right along this edge, you'll see like a, like a blue kind of color bleeding out. And on this side, if you look carefully, you'll see um, kind of a reddish color. Again, this is called chromatic aberration. Now, you know what, before I do this, let me see if the one click uh, version of this works. So over in the profile section, you can also remove chromatic aberration and boom, actually it took it off. So that's awesome. Um, that worked really well. It took out a lot of the aberration here too. See my jeans, same thing on both sides. You have you know, this reddish color on the right, this greenish color on the left, and it just removes it with one click. So actually that worked beautifully, even off this rock before. You see a little bit of blue there. 
it takes it right out and so very good I mean very natural looking photo this appears the way someone with good vision would probably have seen me standing on that rock that day or whoever took this photo um, for the most part it looks like I'm standing up straight so I'm not gonna do anything to well why not why not mess with it just to kind of see if it looks a little bit better and it doesn't but whatever I'm just gonna leave it like that um, so that's that photo now this one is a little bit more interesting and uh, first of all I want to thank Claudia for giving me the permission to use this photo um, basically this is a photo I asked her to pose for in Budapest and um, she's basically just blowing some uh, flower petals off the palm of her hand and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna isolate the yellows in these petals or even even there's one red pe um, petal here I'm gonna isolate that turn everything else uh, black and white and so this is um, something where you're getting into the Photoshop space but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now okay in order to do this uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the brush tool and I'm just gonna brush um, and desaturate the whole photo first and so in order to do this I'm gonna take the brush here um, and take it full size zero feather and I'm gonna make sure that saturation is all the way down um, and then I'm just gonna brush over the whole photo now what this also did is you guys um, I didn't I didn't uh, mention it right now but also clarity is down so I decreased the clarity also to kind of smooth out the skin um, and so uh, and you'll see that in a second when I bring this photo back up but basically um, yeah clarity I mean it shows every little detail in the skin if you notice um, the light reflecting off when you reduce the clarity it kind of smooths it over it's just a quick and dirty way to do it I wouldn't I'm not I wouldn't recommend it but that is one way to do it so now I'm gonna bring the size down on this um, on this brush now and I'm gonna use the um, alt key and on Windows now I'm using a Mac right now so I'm using the alt, alt key but on Windows it might be the same so when you hold alt it's actually a subtractive so now what we're gonna do is actually subtract as you can see from this uh, photo or from this mask and so um, holding alt now um, I'm gonna reduce the feather size a little bit and um, basically start erasing the parts of the photo that I want in color and uh, Okay, now as you can see, I did go a little bit over on some parts, and the reason for this is because, um, for example, here on this flower, um, the petal is in motion, and so the edge is not as sharp as it should be. It's actually a little bit blurred because of motion blur. So what I'm gonna do is actually add it back, add the mask back, but I'm gonna increase the feather here. And that way you get sort of a softer effect on that edge. And uh, at the same time, you don't lose that uh, effect of having that isolated uh, color. Uh, same thing down here. There's like this sort of greenish color coming in. So I'm just going to feather that over a little bit. And that way it maintains that um, effect without seeing seeming too photoshopped. Um, and there we go and then I'm gonna decrease the photo I mean the feather here and just clean up this edge now usually I wouldn't be doing this with my mouse I would be doing it with a with some kind of uh, either my iPad or uh, a Wacom pad you know with a pen um, because it's much easier to do it that way I just don't know how to record or I've never tried recording a video explaining how to do it but that's typically how I would have done it in this case so it's looking pretty good now um, I'm just gonna clean up these small edges here make sure that we got everything proper
Alright guys, so now that I've got that photo pretty much where I want it now, um, the last thing I'm going to do is basically now edit the photo as a whole. Okay, done with that. Now, overall, um, obviously this photo needs a little bit of work. Um, so what I'm going to do first actually is edit that mask again. So in order to edit a mask, what happens is anytime you edit a mask, um, you get these little dots. Now, as you can see, it, it when you hover over it, it shows basically the point where I started um, coloring in this whole thing with the black and white effect. Um, it starts right there. And um, basically, if you hover over it, it'll show in red everywhere that it's applied. And where it's not in red, uh, is where I basically subtracted the effect. Well, if you click on it, now you can actually go and edit the mask. So what I'm going to do here is actually, um, it was uh, the exposure was decreased, so I'm going to bring that back up again. But I'm going to increase contrast to kind of give it this like uh, folky kind of old effect. Um, I'm going to bring shadows down and highlights as well. Clarity's down. I'm going to decrease texture as well to make it more, uh, you know, smooth, kind of dreamlike. Um, and maybe straighten the photo a little bit. There we go. And so there we go. Now I have just the yellow here isolated of the petals. Um, it's kind of a rough job. I mean, here um, you'll see that right around where the petals are coming off the hand, um, it, it needs a little bit of detail here. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go back, uh, click there, and go ahead and start adding in again um, in these areas, and just softer. There we go. Those edges were a little too hard, so I'm going to soften them up a little bit to look a little more natural. There we go. Okay, there we go. Now we have a working photo. Now overall, now I can do the edits to the photo now that everything looks uh, more or less pretty even. Um, I don't know what dehaze really does for this one, but... Oh, vibrance. Yes, I can increase vibrance to make those, uh, those pop a little bit more. And there we go. I mean, I pretty much have it there. Um, probably can subtract, subtract from the mask there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that there as well. Okay, I'm gonna stop messing with this. Um, obviously, it can still use a little bit of work. I think, um, let me see if I can just bring out those shadows a little bit, see some details in the hair. Uh, but overall, a uh, nice uh, way to isolate colors like this. Um, there are alternate ways. Um, for example, uh, what I could have done, and let me go ahead and show you another tip here, is you can make a virtual copy and it's also going to be right here in my quick collection. Now, another thing we can do is also, oh, whoops. Oh, okay, yeah, this is the digital copy. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and reset that. Now, another thing you can do is basically um, in that same mask that we're going to apply to the whole thing, instead of desaturating everything, I'm just going to go ahead and reset all these settings. Um, we can just desaturate certain colors. So over here, we can go and just desaturate everything. Except for yellow. Saturate that. And then what I do when I add my mask, oops, when I do, when I add my mask, I can desaturate everything and um, basically just go around this and it'll be a little more clean. 
Now, there's tones of yellow in the jacket. I'm, I'm guessing it was a, probably like a green jacket, I think. Yeah, there you go. So there's a little bit of uh, uh, yellow tones in there. There's some yellow there in the background. So we want to eliminate that stuff, obviously. And so um, you just go around and basically erase um, everything except for the flowers again. Very similar to the way we just did it, but um, just an alternate method. Um, next photo is a big group photo that we took where uh, everybody that was traveling to Budapest from this study abroad group that was in uh, took this photo jumping in the air. Um, as you can see, their backs turned. Um, if I just increase, you know, now you can see what everyone was wearing. Um, hopefully no butt cracks. Yeah, everything's fine. Good. Um, so I'm going to bring that back to where it was. Actually, I'm just going to darken this completely. Uh, bring down the highlights as well. Um, underexpose it a little bit and then dehaze. And it's kind of crazy, but you can see these little streams in the air. Um, and it was daytime. So the reason I'm doing this is just to kind of see what other colors I can get in the sky. Um, now, if I start messing with the temperature, you're going to see different things happen with the sky too. Now it looks like a sort of end of the day shot, which it was. Um, and then, you know, now you can bring it down to almost looking like night. So I'm going to go ahead and reset that to where it was. Oh, whoops. Um, I guess, yeah, I guess it's somewhere in the middle here or a little more cool. Um, and then bring the exposure back. And then I'm just going to crop it in. And keep everybody right in the middle. But you know what the heck? I'm just going to break the, uh, the proportions here. And make this sort of a half and half photo. And there you go. Oh, got some fringe uh, colors there. So I'm going to bring those. Try to remove them. Yeah, I removed them. Why not? So I'm not going to do too much to this one. Looks fine as it is. It was kind of nice to see and revisit this photo. Ah, the first soccer stadium, professional soccer stadium that I've ever visited. Um, Wembley Stadium and did a wonderful stadium tour. Um, just straightened out the photo a little bit. Now I'm going to bring up the shadows uh, and then increase exposure a little bit. Increase contrast, get some clarity there, some texture. Uh, no need to dehaze here. We don't really have any haze in the photo. And then, boom, make the colors pop. Um, it was night. And uh, pitch is bright green. The seats are nice and red. Um, it looks like I am where I want to be already on this photo. Um, I don't see too much fringe, uh, you know, chromatic aberration going on. Oh, never mind. Spoke too soon. Looks like there is. And so, okay, eliminated some of that. Now it looks a little more natural. What do we have here? Some signs. Okay, let's just say I want to erase those signs. I'm going to go ahead and heal those out of the photo. And it's so small, it's hardly noticeable. Oh, more signs. Okay, I'm only doing this for fun, uh, just to kind of show you what I'm doing. But uh, basically, if you followed me there, what I did was I hit this little icon here, and you have a clone and heal brush. I used the heal one, and basically just highlighted whatever I wanted to erase, and it just got rid of it for me. Um, sometimes you do have to do a little more work to get that to work, but um, it's not going to work as well on these cables, for instance. But I don't feel like doing that right now. But for the most part, this looks like a really nice, you know, photo. I could use it as a wallpaper. Um, if I want to get rid of some of these little dots everywhere, and this happens because this was a really underexposed photo, and then I brought it up digitally, and so you end up with a lot of these little dots, which is called noise. Um, if you want to denoise a photo in Lightroom, uh, the way you do this is going to the Detail tab here. And remember, I'm doing this all in Develop. But going down to the detail tab and 
increasing the noise reduction here, the luminance. Um, and then if you still want detail in the photo, which I do, uh, because of, you know, you want to see some definition in these seats, for example, um, you want to increase the detail and then I'm going to increase sharpening. I'm going to sharpen the photo just a little bit. And that helps with a little bit of definition on the seats as well. And there you go. I don't have, at least I don't have a lot of those little dots anymore. Um, just so you know what that looked like before. Um, you see that. And then um, I had it at about halfway, 50, which sort of eliminates and smooths out a lot of those dots. So if you are using it as a wallpaper in full size, you won't see so much of that noise there. All right, next photo. Now this is a horrible photo of me very excitedly holding a replica of the FA Cup, uh, which is uh, a uh, you know the final competition uh, for the uh, English Football Association or Soccer Association, and it's played at Wembley Stadium, which is why that replica trophy is there. First thing I'm going to do is make the trophy stand up right. There we go. So that's my sort of point of reference of which way is up and down. And so I'm going to make sure that trophy is standing tall. I'm somewhat in the center of the photo. Now, this photo looks like it was taken with one of those disposable cameras that has the flash. I'm going to try my best to make this look better. I don't know if this is going to be possible. So first thing I'm going to do is bring up shadows. Tons of noise. So I took this, you know, right here you can see I took it with ISO 6400. That's going to create a lot of noise in a photo, uh, regardless. And then I had my aperture really small, f14, which I should have brought that up at the time. This was taken at a time where I didn't know much about the principles of photography. I just had a fancy camera and I wasn't shooting on uh, auto, but didn't really know what I was doing anyway. Um, let's see, bring down the highlights a little bit. There you go. Now you can see everything's a little bit more even. And now I can expose everything together. Um, I'm going to bring down the blacks a little bit. This this hat is supposed to be closer to black, which it isn't anymore. So I don't know. I'm going to try to, let's see if I decrease clarity. Ah, look at that. Luminance, I mean, vibrance actually brought the color of my collar up, which was kind of nice. Um, a lot of green in this photo. So if you notice, the photo looks a little, very green. Even the shadows on my face look a little green. So... What I did was I brought the tint a little bit up to the red side, and now you can see my face looks a little more natural colored. Next thing, noise reduction. <laughs> oh, man, it looks like I'm using one of those smoothing filters on my iPhone. Horrible. Well, if you're into that, you know, noise reduction can do a number on someone's face. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to have to bring it maybe about here. There we go. And then, um, I don't know, this just looks horrible. I'm going to bring down the detail a little bit or maybe up. Okay, whatever. I look sickeningly smooth, but whatever. I'm just going to leave it like that because I'm trying my hardest to recover a photo that was taken horribly. Um, okay, whatever. I mean, this was the original photo, and this is what I made it into. Um, it is a little bit better. I hope the details on my sweater aren't making this video go crazy, but... Um, I guess, I guess now that I look at the original, um, this is a lot better. Um, at least you can see the stadium and stuff in the background. Um, still looks like something taken with film and then scanned or something, but I'm just going to leave that alone now. Ooh, yeah. This is one of my favorite photos I've ever taken. This is a photo from Istanbul taken from Galata Tower in the Galata Village or the this little island that's across the way from... Uh, proper Istanbul over here on the Asian side so a little fun fact this part of Istanbul is in Europe the part where I'm standing is in Asia anyway awesome night shot taken with a 25 second exposure the reason I love this photo is because it's got Hagia Sophia here which is an iconic old cathedral turned mosque or I think it was like mosque turned cathedral turned mosque turned cathedral a few times it has a pretty crazy and long history um turbulent history and then right across the way from it within walking distance and i shot was the blue mosque which is also a spectacular building as well as a couple of other mosques in in the you know when you look closely and a lot of them have very similar architecture i don't know what any of these are called but 
these are the ones that uh, Priyanka and I s spent a lot of time. We went back again and again and again, especially at night, to see all the beautiful uh, fountains and colors and all that that was going on over there. Anyway, um, now to start with this photo, uh, first thing I'm going to do, highlights, bring up the shadows, didn't do much, as you can see, increase the vibrance. Now, one thing I love about these long exposure shots is color temperature changes the photos so much. So as you can see, this um, the sky is kind of this like ominous sort of orange color. I love messing with the um, the color temperature sometimes to bring out better colors. So just to kind of show you what this looked like originally, this is where it was at, right? I brought the highlights down, brought the shadows up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cool it down a little bit. And now the city just completely transforms. Um, looks much nicer. Uh, because this is a long exposure shot, you can see the lights of the traffic moving through, which you could see before as well, but um, now in blue it just looks so much nicer. But um, the boats that are passing through the water, you see those streaks there. And so really a fun shot to take. Um, I'm going to increase the vibrance. Um, maybe that went a little too blue. And bring that up a little bit. And then maybe, ooh, yeah, bring up the tint a little bit, red, and now you've got some really beautiful colors here. I wonder what Dehaze does. Well, it was a pretty clear day besides the sky, so you don't have a, little a lot of haze over the city, so I'm not going to really use this. I'm just going to reset that back to zero. Um, add a little bit of clarity there. Add some texture. Um, I don't have any noise in this photo because it was long exposure, so took all the details really beautifully. By the way, this is 3x, that's why everything looks hazy, but at 1x, you know, still nice and crisp. This will definitely be a very fun photo to blow up in the future. So um, that's pretty much it. I mean, you don't have a lot of chromatic aberration with these long exposure shots. You have the eye of the camera open so long that you don't have a lot of those effects. And I don't know the physics of it. I don't know the science of it, but it changes the way uh, photos are taken and you're seeing things a lot like the way your eye would be uh, and then some. So a lot of details that your eye usually wouldn't see in a lot of colors, um, the camera actually picks up digitally and makes for a beautiful photo. So. Um, just to show you what that was like before, before, after. And um, actually, it looks like we were able to bring out some details here where this whole area was washed out in light. Um, I brought it down and you can kind of see details in it now. And it's this beautiful sort of neon blue color. All right, next photo. Ah, the Bundestag uh, in Berlin. A lot of history here. Beautiful, imposing structure really weird way I took this photo. I actually set my camera down on the dirt, so if I expose it, you'll see. It was a bunch of dirt here, so this was like, I don't know, it was like below freezing this day, and so all of the, all of this at the bottom is all ice and dirt. I set my camera down, I think on like a, my bag or something, and I tried to take this photo as straight as I could. Also a long exposure shot. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is, you know, again, throw proportions out the window. And I'm just going to go ahead and crop out as much of the dirt as I can reasonably. And there you go. And so the next thing I'm going to do is straighten it out, which I kind of did already. Okay. Now again, kind of an ugly grayish color coming from everything. So I'm going to, I'm going to increase vibrance here and just cool down the photo. And boom, you see that the sky looks a nice blue now. This, uh, I guess, whatever stone or marble this building's made out of now uh, changes its character. It looks much nicer, much more vibrant. Uh, I'm going to increase the contrast, maybe some clarity. Maybe dehazing will do something. Well, okay. You see what's dehazing de is making the, the sky look really good, but then you end up with all this weird, you know, kind of Gotham City looking stuff happening here. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that and um, also decrease clarity a little bit and increase texture and that way we get all those little you know the stones here are all different colored because these are probably natural stone uh, uh, sort of blocks that they're using and so see all the different little colors there come out and I'm pretty much done with this photo because it's long exposure oh no we do have a little bit of chromatic aberration there so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that 
Let's see if the button works. And it kind of did. I don't know if it, like moved it over there or something, but um, I'm just gonna be fringe on one side. Okay, this is this is causing some really weird stuff to happen. So I'm just gonna leave that alone, and I'm just gonna use the button. So there you go. Quick edit of this photo. Um, you know, I didn't even mess with the highlights and shadows. Let's see what that does to the photo. Um, that added a little bit of, oh, cool. Now you can actually see inside the building. So I didn't have that before. So if I kind of go back here, let me show you guys what that was like. So the inside was all washed out. I brought down the highlights, up the shadows, and now you can kind of see the inside of the building. Inside of the building, I didn't add this to my collection, but inside the building there's like this crazy kind of like glass dome and you can see it sort of glowing over the top here it's hidden by this uh, peak here but right over the top and and it's got like a spiral staircase up it and when you climb it and you look down you're looking straight over the german parliament so it's a really cool setting um i do have other photos of it but you know again it, it just wasn't one of my favorite ones but it was pretty cool um, now I've got a bunch of photos here that I took at the East Side Gallery in Berlin, which I will probably do. Let me do another video of that and show you guys how to stitch panoramas together. So what I did is I took a bunch of photos of the different segments of the wall. And then, so what I'll do is I'll just stitch them all together, but I'll show you guys how I did that. Um, ooh, okay. The Soviet War Memorial in Berlin. Um, you know, I'm not a big fan of the USSR, but... This memorial was crazy, and one fact that is not debatable is the fact that not only the world, but the Russians especially had tremendous losses during World War II. So this was a memorial to um, the fallen soldiers. Uh, it was on the west, I'm sorry, the east side of Berlin, where it was, uh, you know, Russian controlled because the city was divided in half by the Berlin Wall. And so this monument uh, was a huge, imposing, kind of serene and surreal uh, setting. So uh, bringing down the highlights, it was a snowy day. And so I want to get rid of some of the snow blindness in the photo, uh, but also uh, bring out some of the colors. This was sort of a deep red color, <laughs> obviously. Um, and... Um, so I need to bring that back out somehow. Let's see if I can do this. Um, okay, exposure's there, clarity's there. Ah, okay. Now this photo is really cool, so I'm gonna warm it up a little bit. There you go. You can see the red coming out a little bit and then uh, tint it up. Now we're seeing it a little bit more the way I was seeing it that day. Um, cool photo the the um you know i like the symmetry in the whole area the whole park kind of had a nice symmetry to it um and this was just one of the better photos i took not my favorite actually but um the others are like really um kind of sad and so i just didn't want to put those in right now And now that looks pretty even. Um, and so there you go. I uh, just, you know, this is before and after. Okay. So next photo. Ah, uh, Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. Man, was this an awesome trip. Um, as you can see, the white on the ceiling is being washed out right now in the cathedral. So I'm gonna bring down the highlights so you can see a little definition there. Bring out the shadows a little bit so that everything looks nice and even. And then I'm gonna actually decrease the exposure here. And there we go, now you can see great detail here. Increase the contrast, some clarity, texture, vibrance for all those colors, all that stained glass. As you can see, you've got some chromatic aberration here. Let's just go ahead and remove that. Boom, it's gone. And there we go. I mean, not a whole lot I can do to this photo. 
Um, let me check if it's straight. And it is not. So let me go ahead and straighten that out a little bit. And center it. And there we go. I have a nice symmetrical photo of the ceiling of Sagrada Familia. So before, oops, before, after, before, after. Check the description. I will have the before and after photos there. And so moving on. Uh, why did I add this photo? Okay, this isn't a great photo, but I'll just go ahead and process it anyway real quick. I'm going to straighten out that horizon a little bit. Increase vibrance, cut through the haze a little bit. Um, there we go. Light shadows. And expose. And then this is a really warm photo, so I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Cool it down a little bit. Because it was a cool afternoon after all. And the reason I say that is because air temperature actually affects the way color manifests in photos, believe it or not. I don't know the science behind it, but I think it's the way the light comes into the atmosphere. Um, and temperature bends that color. And you see things differently depending on the temperature so and the time of day. So there we go. I uh, real simple kind of thing here. Sharpen the photo a bit to get some. Oops, some detail. Oh my! What did that do? Okay, that's not so bad. Okay, there we go. Um, I'll just go ahead and crop out some of the trees. And there we go. So, before, after. Alrighty, moving on, moving on. Ah, a cat in Park Guell in Barcelona. This was kind of fun. Um, Perfect timing, saw it yawning, snapped the picture. And uh, intense chromatic aberration here because I had to expose the cat a little bit. So going back, remove chromatic aberration there, and that didn't actually help. So now to do it manually. Oh, that was easy. Okay, that happened pretty quick. Um, next thing, increase contrast, maybe bring down the exposure a little bit to make it look a little more natural. And there we go. Make sure the cat is standing up right. Now what I'm using is the edge of this wall here, assuming that that is a level wall. Um... Aligning it with those grid lines. And you know what? Let's just go ahead and rule the thirds, kind of arrange, align the photo a little bit. I don't think that's going to work well. So I'm just going to leave it there more or less and frame it in. There we go. So before, after. Not a huge difference, but makes it a little bit more of a presentable photo. And moving forward, Camp New. In the Spanish League, I favor Barcelona, so I was ecstatic to visit the stadium. Uh, one of the most beautiful stadiums. This place is a temple of soccer. Um, best players in the world. Lionel Messi, for example. This is his home stadium. Okay, so now I got that level. I'm gonna 
bring down the highlights, bring up the shadows, bring up the vibrance, a little bit of contrast there, maybe warm up the photo a little bit. Um, now expose. Oh yeah, I can dehaze a little bit. I think that'll add some drama in the sky. There we go. Actually, I'm going to cool down this photo a little bit. There we go. Beautiful. So resetting. That's what it looked like before, and that's what I. That's what it looks like after. Um, just gonna add a little bit of clarity here, and if you notice, um, clarity brought out the seats a little more, and that's the important thing in these stadiums is, you know, getting that detail in the seat, um, and being able to see some of the highlights in the seat will um, make the photo seem so much more sharp and detailed. And there we go. Do we have any chromatic aberration? Yes, we do actually. Just a little bit there. So let's see if we can remove that with one click. And wow, it worked. Okay, very good. Um, obviously, the average person won't notice something like that, but uh, you know, it's always nice to kind of get that photo as perfect as possible. So um, increase it. There we go. Okay, now before, after. Now I'm gonna leave it alone. Moving on. Three of many of my favorite people in the world. Um, Dan, Ari, and Priyanka. Okay, let's see. Looks like the photo is pretty level. I'm judging by this kind of pole there. So skin tones appear a little bit unnatural, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cool down the photo a little bit. There we go. Increase vibrance. Maybe bring up some shadows. This was taken at my friend Dan's wedding in LA, I think, Santa Monica. And um, because it's a dark shot, there is noise in the, in the photo, a lot of noise there. So I'm just gonna bring that down a little bit. It smooths it out, but wonderful and and expose it a little, maybe overexpose it a little bit to make it look a little nicer. Let's see what dehazing does. God, I love this tool. Not much. Yeah, not much there. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that alone. Um, and there we go. Before, after. Just a regular party photo. Oh, and then the next day, the wedding, of course. One of the most scenic weddings I've ever been to. Beautiful Pacific Ocean front. And a beautiful couple, like straight out of a magazine kind of couple. Uh, okay, this is warm it up a little bit. There we go. Now, of course, the sun's out. You get some really harsh shadows, some harsh light and things, but um, still, uh, let's see if I got any chromatic aberration here, which I do. Let's remove that. There we go. Okay. And um, I think that's all I really need. I'm gonna tint it a little bit because it is appearing a little unnatural. But cool. Usually doing this when there's people involved, uh, increasing those shadows and bringing down those highlights that I always do, um, makes the photos look a little unnatural, but in this case, um, very vibrant, which is nice. Uh, great colors, great detail. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is kind of afternoon, I think, and so um, that's why you get that that angle on the sun, but still, just just looks beautiful here. And uh, last thing I'm gonna do is just crop in the couple a little bit. There we go. 
Salt Lake City, the Church of Latter-day Saints. Okay. Another beautiful, let's see, a 10-second exposure, as you can see over here. Um, some of my favorite photos to take, long exposure shots. So bringing down highlights, bringing up shadows. Eh, don't care for those shadows. Don't want to emphasize the people too much. It's all about the building here. Now let me dehaze to kind of bring out that sky. Now, I had a dirty sensor. Dirty, dirty. And so you see I've got a lot of just junk on my sensor and so it appears in the photo. Oh, this is awful. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up in a second, but let me go ahead and enhance the, uh, do the basic enhancements first. Now the color on the building, I think is just, it just seems a little too warm. So I'm gonna bring that down a little bit and it's a little green. So I'm gonna bring it up in tint a little bit as well. And there we go. Now let's just make sure the photo is level which it is actually using the tower peaks there it looks like they're all at about the same level um, the arches and everything are all nice and lined up so yeah i'm not going to edit that i'm going to mess with that too much at all so now let's just heal all those little blemishes on the photo Okay, there we go. Basically got rid of all the little spots everywhere. Um, let's check for chromatic aberration. And there is. Let's see if this works. And it did. Wow. Okay, good. I love when that button works. Now to expose the photo a little bit. Okay, all right, moving on. Salt Lake City. Church of Latter-day Saints, the Utah State Capitol, also in Salt Lake City. Another long exposure shot. This one was... Oh no, this one's not a long exposure shot, actually. It uh, was taken one-tenth of a second exposure. So that's why you see the detail in the flag, for instance. Um, otherwise, if it was a long exposure, the flags would have been blurred out because they were blowing in the wind, so... Okay... Increase the vibrance, we can get that sky in there. You know what? Again, it's about the building, not the little plants in the front, so... Uh, I'm not going to expose it yet, but I am going to... Correct this color temperature a little bit. That is a very yellow building, so I'm going to change that. And remember, on these night shots, just changing color temperature and stuff just changes the photo so much. It makes it incredible. So I'm actually going to bring the shadows down more so as to kind of emphasize the building rather than the plants up front. I'm just going to warm it up just a little bit. There we go. And it looks like we've got a pretty good shot here now. Some very noticeable chromatic aberration there. And the button worked. Hell yeah. Okay, cool. So you've got, you know, I like this shot because it had the U.S. flag visible. Uh, some of the other ones I had longer exposures, uh, it wasn't so clear. Um, here's another shot. Same capital again. I'm going to try to make this one quick. That is not a good idea. And that's not a good idea. Holy cow. Okay. Looks like we got a lot of noise here, but you can also see some stars, which is really cool. This was taken at 1 25th of a second. So, there we go, that's not so bad. 
lost some detail, but still looks like a beautiful building. I like this, the flow of this little path walking up, leading up to the capital. Um, chromatic aberration, I already removed that. Okay. Before, after. Noticeable difference, even on this one. Um, before, after. Ah. Yellowstone. Okay. Start with vibrance here. Let's try to bring that sky back. The haze. Highlights down, shadows up. It looks a little unnatural, but let me see if I can make this work. I think getting that bison in is important. And uh, there we go. And of course, the beautiful landscape here, the flow of that river um, just makes a nice framing for this shot. And I'm going to try to get less of this little sludge down here. And there we go. Okay, moving forward. New York City. All right. This was taken from atop the Empire State Building at night, of course. So the first thing I'm gonna do is um, straighten out the horizon. This is so cool. So up high that you can actually see the curvature of the Earth. Very cool. All right, now after straightening the horizon, um, let me just underexpose this a little bit. Haze. So there's that harsh light coming off the building, actually off the Empire State Building. But, um, okay, I think this looks like a pretty workable shot now. And so now I can increase the exposure again. shot down and man does that add some drama very cool just millions and millions of little lights all over the place but okay increase the vibrance here and warm up just a tad there we go so this is before after Okay. Old Trafford, home of Manchester United Football Club. As I do with my others, go ahead and decrease highlights, increase shadows, increase the contrast here. Maybe underexpose just a tad right now. Increase vibrance to get that rich red and green into the photo and add a little bit of texture now. Let me see if dehazing brings in the sky a little bit, which it does. All right, beautiful. 
Okay, cool. So now I have something I can work with. Um, oh yeah. Also make sure that the photo is level. Which it is, wow. Okay, I don't think I brought a tripod with me. But it looks like it's, it's pretty level. Um, okay. Uh, that's pretty much it for this photo. I can't, I don't know what else I can do with it. Uh, let me check the chromatic aberration. And there it is. And it's gone. Okay. And move on. Another one of the most scenic weddings I've ever been to in Wirral, I think, from what I remember. And inside this beautiful church with all these old paintings and just, just again, and just a beautiful, beautiful setting. I'm actually going to bring down the shadows a little bit. Why? Because I want the emphasis right here where the light is shining down from the heavens. And so uh, bringing down the highlights as well because we want to see, be able to see the dress there. You see what just happened. It looked like uh, everything washed out there. And now you can actually see some detail there. So I'm going to bring the shadows all the way down because what I'm about to do is actually just expose the photo a little more. And now increase contrast. There we go. Vibrance. Get those purples and reds all over the place a little bit brighter. straighten it out a little bit oh did I already do that I think I already did okay leave that alone then make sure they're centered which they are but I'm just gonna crop in the photo a little bit there we go okay before after not a huge difference but Great photo now. Ooh, okay, okay, yeah. So I took my daughter on the stroller to get some fresh air at this manor that where the wedding was. And um totally messed up the settings on my camera for some reason. I was at F2.8. It was a nice, bright, evenly lit day. And so as you can see, everything ended up washed out. Let me try to recover this the best I can. So, underexposing everything, now you can see my baby's there. She's playing with her feet or something. Yeah, she is. <laughs> and, um, try to bring that to an exposure level. That's good. It's still, you know, the problem with overexposing photos now is these highlights that are completely washed out, they're never going to be able to be recovered. Um, and they're going to have to stay like that. There's no way around it. So... I'm just gonna try to uh, make this work the best I can. Let's see if dehazing works. Does somewhat. Contrast does somewhat as well. And get some texture back in the photo. Let's even it out. I'm using the top of this window and this window. Let's see, and there they are. They are nice and level, assuming that whenever this building was built in the 1400s or whatever, that it was never using modern engineering technique. And bring down highlights. Now I can expose the photo a little bit more. Make it seem more natural. Okay. That's the best I'm going to do with this one. Oof, some intense chromatic aberration there. What? Oh, there we go. Okay. Ooh, that was tough. All right. Um, now, you see it just totally killed the color in the stroller. You see that? Now, that is actually the color of the stroller, not this white. Remember, all that got washed out because it was overexposed. Now, it just turned it completely gray. But, okay, cool. Um, I think that's the best I'm going to do with this photo. So just to show you, before, 
after. Anfield, home of Liverpool. And oddly enough, you know, when we looked at Barcelona, they had their slogan there and the sponsors kind of nice and small everywhere. Old Trafford, Manchester United, right across the whole thing. Sir Alex Ferguson Stan, manunited.com, etc., etc., etc. Here, the only place where you know that this is Liverpool's home is right there. Very odd. Their sponsor took over everything. That standard Chargers logo. Weird. But it is what it is. Okay, let's dehaze that. Looks like there was a little bit of haze coming in from somewhere, so increase vibrance there. So exposure. Ah, my screen wasn't at full brightness. Okay, wasn't seeing things right. Okay, now let's even this out a bit. Maybe in a future tutorial, I'll help. Uh, I'll show you guys how I can try to remove these hoses um, the heel it doesn't work well for things like this to go all the way across like that you need to use something like clone and and sort of mask in or or blur out some of the lines and stuff like that it's um, a process so chromatic aberration is there so I'm going to fix that hopefully with one click and done. Cool. All right, so there you go. I have Anfield. Am I centered? Let's see. I am not so. Closer. I think that's about as close as I'm going to get to centered. Um, yeah, and it is straight, so. Yep, there you go, Anfield. Before, after. Uh, the main difference looks like it's in the sky and some of this, uh, this in here in the dark of the stands here, you can see some detail. So, overall, I think somewhat successful. Moving on. Ooh, this is one of my favorite ones. I already did this in the other video, but um, this is the Taj Mahal, taken February 2019. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is vibrance. Highlights and shadows, a little bit of contrast, and then ba-bam, dehaze. Favorite thing to do. Add in a little bit of clarity there, some texture. Now expose the photo and warm it up. Okay. D. Hayes did a bit of a disservice there. Yeah, it made it a little too intense, so bring that down. Bring the exposure in a little bit. And let's cut off those people at the bottom. There we go. Man, and this was early morning and it was already crowded. Crazy. Some noise there, so let's kind of try to get rid of that. Let's move that over. Oh, but you know what? We're losing some detail in the building. I'm not going to do that. So let's leave the noise. I'll live with the noise. And there we go. Before, after. Is it straight? Is it straight? It is. Wow, we hand centered. Cool. Varanasi, magical, magical, magical place. These guys are doing a religious ritual called an arti. And um, 
what throws this whole thing off and made it really hard to take photos as well as process them are these ridiculous lights up here these like umbrella things that they had each one a different color casting those colors over the priests um yeah india's obsessed with leds and it really shows here Bring up those shadows a little bit. Some natural tones, some vibrance there. Let's see if I can. Ooh, no, 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 no. There's some terrible, terrible noise in this photo. What are the settings? Oh my god. Okay, ISO 25,600 ISO. So um, I uh, wasn't watching what I was doing, obviously. Messed this one up. How horrible. Travel all the way around the world and didn't have my camera set right in one of the most magical places I've ever been. Ah, it's all right. And this is one of the things I wanted pretty bad, but that probably means this whole set of photos was a little messed up. Um, so be it. So, the hazing doesn't do much to here. Uh, I'm not going to... All right, I'm just going to leave this one be. Not too crazy about it. I thought it was going to be one of my more favorite, uh, my favorite photos, but not really. Yeah, I guess, I mean, some somewhat of a difference there. More natural colors. Uh, some of their faces come out a little bit better, so I won't complain. London. Buckingham Palace. Um, there's a concept known as implied motion, where when you see that there is a person in motion, for example, or an object, um, you see he's moving toward the left of the photo. What you want to do is try to frame him on the right of the photo. I'm completely going to defy that. But what this does is in the mind, it plays a little mental trick. And it's almost like it'll animate in our mind. We can almost see him moving. And that's known as implied motion. And basically, you're implying that, um, you know, the direction of motion here which is to the left. Um, instead, I'm gonna frame it the other way, which totally kills that concept, but I really wanna get this box thing that he stands in, in the photo. So let's make sure everything's nice and level. There we go. Nice. Hmm. Not sure what was in focus. Oh, there we go. Okay. And it's hard to tell what was in focus in this photo, but uh, let's see. Is there any chromatic aberration? Doesn't look like it. So nice, even light in the photo. Um, this was before. This is after. Stamford Bridge. My favorite club. Chelsea Football Club and the most recent stadium I went to visit just gorgeous Okay, I think I'm done with this one already. Um, let's see, is there any noise? Not really any noise. I mean, it's a daytime shot, so there's not going to be much noise. Chromatic aberration is already removed. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, that's already gone. Let me just warm up this photo. It seems a little too cool for my taste. 
What? Okay. There we go. Okay, I think we're there. This is before, after. Oh, you know what? Um, this is the vignetting basically on the edges. You see how it's getting darker there on the edges and that's because I exposed the photo a little bit more. But if you see it, even in the original, you'll see it there. This is actually reversible. Um, if we go down back to lens corrections and you go to manual, this vignetting, you can actually undo there, you see? And so now it looks nice and even. You don't get those harsh shadows in the corners like that. You can actually undo that. Now you go the other extreme, it actually makes it light, like whiter in the corners. So instead, you kind of want to be in between so it's nice and even. And there you go. So this is the before and after. Oh man, and yet another scenic wedding. Um, this is Horsens, Denmark. And the wedding of my friend Jimmy. And another couple that appears to be right out of a magazine. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous couple in a gorgeous setting. Gorgeous wedding. Bring out those shadows. Didn't help much, so I just need to expose the photo a bit. Get some vibrance in there. Okay, yeah, there are some fringe colors there on Jimmy's collar. Let me try to do it. With, oh, the button didn't work. Okay. So I'm going to have to do it manually. Okay. Yeah, I mean, when you have direct sunlight, there is some pretty harsh lights coming in, uh, har harsh light coming in, which really causes some bright highlights in the photo. But um, as you can see, I try to even it out as much as possible. And there we go. Um, I think the photo is straight for the most part. I wasn't on center and aligned exactly. Um, I was kind of on the left of this aisle, so poked out as quick as I could and took the photo. So um, that's the best I could do. Let's see. So this is before, after, not big, not a huge difference. And then, of course, here we have the actual setting of the wedding. Very much like a postcard. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'm just going to change the aspect ratio to 4 by 3 and that way it's like a four by three postcard or photo. Bring out the sky. Bring out the shadows a little bit. There you got a nice classic car for the wedding. Where he and Luisa rode off into the sunset. It's pretty nice. Let's see here. Well, actually not the sunset, it was still daytime, but it was still beautiful. Uh, there we go. I'll try to center that Danish flag. Let's see if I can do that. Golly. All right. Yeah, whatever, okay. It's standing upright. It's pretty much almost on center. And we can add a little bit of. Oh man, it's a little too cool. There we go. Warm it up a little bit. 
There we go. Before. Oops. After. Before. After. Okay, so guys, basically here I have processed quite a few photos. Check the description. I've got the before and after photos and links to the full size images in the description below. Um, if you guys have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to um, comment in the comment section below with your questions. And of course, as always, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up hit the bell and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.